Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Channel 781 News Debrief. Um, this week, we're going to be chatting primarily about uh, Waltham Field Station and the most recent city council meetings uh, back and forth on uh, what to do with the property and what happened there. Um, we'll also be touching a little bit on the Lexington solar farm that abuts Waltham that uh, saw two resolutions. Uh, in the Waltham City Council to do with it. Um, and uh, joining us uh, this week is our usual crew of James Kerkelis. Hi, everyone. Josh Castor. Hello, everyone. And Emily Spirian. Happy New Year. <laughs> so this past week was a uh, very heated discussion about uh, the Waltham Field Station and Waltham Fields Community Farm. Um, we're going to be talking primarily about that. I think everyone here has uh, at least something to say about that. Uh, we're going to give it over to Emily to give a little synopsis over how the meeting went, and then we'll chat how we felt about how it went. Thank you, Chris. But I don't think that the chambers have been this packed since COVID, which was an interesting feeling because we're also peak respiratory hunger gains. Um, but it, nevertheless, um, that aside, it was a good feeling because it reminded me back maybe four years ago when a whole bunch of farmers came to support um, Waltham Fields Community Farm then when uh, talks were very early on um, with UMass when the future of that land was very uncertain. So in addition to those in Waltham that are very interested in the future of that piece of land, as well as the um, nonprofits that steward the land and you know, a whole bunch of work in the community, um, we had a bunch of farmers primarily, I think from the EMAS Craft uh, Farm Organization, which is the Eastern Mass Collaborative uh, Regional um, collab of British, collab, you know what? It's a bunch of Eastern Mass farmers. Um, but so primarily um, the concerns um, of the counselors, the concerns of the residents and the concerns of the Eastern Mass farmers um, fell into a few headings. So I'm gonna do my best to summarize those um, sort of writ large, um, you know, as well as talk about the outcome. So as Josh had mentioned in the debrief, um, what was voted on last week was a vote um, on the mayor's plan to restrict access to a certain portion of the 240 Beaver Street parcel, as well as restrict access to two entrance exits um, on the basis um, that there is and has been contamination on the site. Now, um, hundreds, if not thousands, uh, there's been a little bit back and forth of pages later. Um, it was mostly data was the good news, um, but I did skim all those reports, um, everything that was publicly available. And I came to the same conclusion that the five city councilors who voted no on this vote came to, which was um, one, that it's not enough time to <laughs> analyze, digest, and make a decision on that much information. Uh, number two, um, that the site that's actually still actively contaminated is on a piece of the property that's adjacent to Waverly Oaks Road and actually could be accessed from Waverly Oaks Road. Uh, one of the main concerns is that if you have trucks um, decontaminating the site, you don't want them uh, driving across uh, the land and potentially contaminating it. That's why you have to section off such a big parcel that would not be an issue if they just accessed it from Waverly Oaks Road. So no one knows at this point, except for the mayor, why the map was drawn that way, that the trucks would need to 
basically be traipsing all across 240 Beaver Street. That question has not be answer, been answered. I'd like to see that be answered by the mayor. We'll see if it will be. Um, a third really critical um, question that was raised by Council Paz in an email out to um, constituents was, what is the big master plan for all these parcels of farmland that we are uh, picking up um, for use in the city of Waltham? And so this includes now 240 Beaver Street. This includes the new um, parcel of land adjacent to the high school that the mayor is very excited about. This includes the Wellington farmland that um, Councillor Darcy has done work, both council work and also some you know, physical labor um, revitalizing. Um, this includes the Arrigo um, farmhouse um, over by the, by the um, Watertown Belmont border. Um, a lot of municipalities have their own agriculture commissions. We just, we don't have any plan to address all this farmland that we've got sitting. And I'll open it up because there's, I know a lot of people, I know you've got a lot of opinions and I'd love to hear from y'all. Thank you, Emily. I, I wanted to talk a little about the information flow in this story because, um, so at the meeting, there were several counselors who spoke in favor of yes, uh, voting yes. And several of them made the claim that the supporters of the farm were there had received informa uh, misinformation. And they were not very specific about what the misinformation was. They didn't seem to be correcting it necessarily. And that really bothered me because if you say that there's misinformation out there, you should say what it is. It's kind of like if I said, you know, watch out because there's a pile of dog poop outside but I'm not gonna tell you where it is, but watch out, right? So, uh, and because I had the, uh, we were doing a special report on this where James, Chris and I all went to the tour and then Emily was helping us with the background and WCAC covered it, WBZ covered it. So there were a lot of people trying to give good information to the public on this and the city didn't make it easy. Um, so back in the middle of December, the mayor asked, to the council to review documents pertaining to the field station. And then at this, at the following meeting, they were given this huge pack of papers. And um, as far as we know, that huge pack of papers was not made public. Um, but I believe that I'm going to share my screen. Um, someone later pointed my attention to go. This was attached to the e-docket on the city website for the meeting where the, the uh, mayor originally asked them to review documents. So I believe this is uh, Google Drive is the electronic equivalent of what the counselors were given. And as you can see, it's set up um, with PDFs that have numbers as names. It's not set up um, like, you know, you want somebody to find important, specific, relevant information. And uh, it has a memo introducing it, and it says what's in here, but it doesn't say what the point is. It doesn't say that the mayor is going to be asking the council to do something. Um, and I wanted to be able to search this. It's not easy to search because it's it's all scanned. And so I downloaded all the files and combined them into one file. It was 3,700 3, pages. So uh, I this it's really not possible to search through this. So it's very difficult to say what was or what wasn't in the packet. Um, and when we watched that meeting and we didn't pick up on the fact that they had, we, we even reported on it in the previous debrief, we didn't pick up on the fact that they had the, the, uh, council was being asked to shut down the property, much less shut, shut down part of it in a very specific way. So after that, the firm um, put out a call to action and Waltham Land Trust backed that up and they put out this map on social media. And it shows that half of the property would be blocked off. It shows that that would be most of the property that Waltham Community Fields um, relies on. It also shows where the 
um, per, where the supposed uh, pollution is. And some of it has, has already been abated according to the farm. Um, and some of it is down on this end where it could be accessed in another way. So this map was really important. And when we went to the tour, they were giving out copies of this and they were the kind of the point of the tour was to show everyone what was on each side of the line and what we, what they were going to be losing. Um, so then when I went to do the special report, I was trying to verify the, this information. And it was really hard because if you look at this picture, it looks like it was taken over the shoulder of a city councilor in the meeting. And then Waltham Land Trust added annotations onto it. So did it say in these uh, 3,700 pages, did it actually say in there that how they were gonna divide it? I couldn't find that part. So I couldn't verify that part and I still can't actually. However, in the meeting, nobody contradicted it. None of the counselors in the meeting said, oh, in fact, we're not dividing it up that way. We're dividing it up a different way. All they said was trust the mayor's intention unless I miss something. They no, said there was mentioned, they never, they, they complained about the fact that this map was out there, but they never clarified anything that was wrong or right on the map. What I did find before we put out the special report was on the attached to the e docket for this most recent meeting is this order that says um, the city council authorizes the mayor to restrict the access to 240 Beaver Street property. It doesn't say exactly how it's going to be split up, but it does verify that she was asking them to restrict access, which is what I said in the special report. Um, so anyways, I think this is all interesting because I it really bothers me that people make a claim of misinformation and then not be clear about what it was. What I think they meant was people were saying things like you want to evict the farm. And technically, this is not an eviction. So technically, that's wrong. But it is it they are forcibly removing the farm. I mean, that is what appears to be happening. So that's not exactly misinformation. That's an interpretation. Um, the other thing was the emails sort of were written from the point of view, you know, like as Emily mentioned, this went out to um, people who were interested in farms. So some of the emails were from the point of view where they were assuming that the counselor's intention was to get rid of the farm. And a lot of the counselors took offense to that in their comments. Um, so there was this claim of misinformation. And I what struck me in the comments of the counselors who were speaking um, for yes at the meeting was that they had very similar tactics that they seem to be using, uh, rhetorical tactics. And they're very similar to tactics we've seen the mayor use. And it seemed to me like maybe they were working off a set of bullet points from the mayor. I don't know that for sure, of course. Well, we'll see what other people think. But um, if you are part of the Waltham Politics Facebook group, you know they have in their graphic a set of type argument types to avoid and one of them is the straw man where you argue against something that your opponent isn't actually saying or you argue against a distorted version of what they're saying and we saw that a lot I think in this meeting because there were some passionate comments about why um, if land is uh, polluted it needs to be cleaned up and why it was important to clean it up. And there was some naming off of chemicals that sounded very scary that may or may not, that may or may not actually be in the land at this time. Um, and that was a straw man because the question at hand was not, should the re environmental remediation be done? The question at hand is why is it necessary to shut down the farm or is it necessary? Is the farm being shut down? And if so, why is it necessary? That was the question they really didn't directly address. Um, so the kind of info dumping, giving a lot of information that not you don't need without pointing out what's important, that's one tactic. And then the other one we saw was sort of a lot of the counselors were offended that people people had questioned their intentions and implied that they were anti-farm. And they said, well, how could I be anti-farm? I did this and this and this. And some counselors even said, we can't be anti-farm because we approved the money to buy the farm. So how dare you say we're anti-farm? Um, which really, it, it wasn't the question at hand. The question at hand is, do you approve? Were you, it was it your understanding that you were shutting down the farm? And if yes, then why? You know, that's, it doesn't matter what your record is on, on farms or vegetables or anything like that. And then the third tactic was just kind of, uh, 
you know, putting a lot emotional, a lot of emotion into something that's not the question at hand. And Councillor Harris did this, where she made a very kind of impassioned speech about why pollution is bad and it needs to be cleaned up. And it, it frankly, it came across as really insincere to me. So did some of the other um, comments that people made um, because they seem to so clearly knowingly be um, changing the subject using a straw man type of argument and yet acting very passionate about something that isn't really the question at hand. Um, and at one point, Councillor Durkee said, and this was quoted in the WBC story, he said that, um, City Council, their role is not the secondary and tertiary effects. They're only there to uh, uh, approve the order as written, as it's in front of them. And this is some really shaky logic, right? Because um, what, how, so he's saying they can only see, consider the primary effects, not the secondary or tertiary effects. So you, how do you define the primary effects. And so like if the mayor said, I want the city council to approve a million dollars for me to rent a helicopter and hoist a huge boulder up into the sky over Waltham and let it go. Okay. And then later people do check the coordinates and check the order and they find out that if this happens, gravity is going to make the boulder land on the chateau and destroy the chateau. So Everybody who is a fan of the Chateau comes into city council and says, save the Chateau. And you're going to say, we signed an order to rent a helicopter. That's it. And to hoist up a boulder. We did not say that gravity should make that boulder fall on the Chateau. Or we did not specifically say that's where it was going to fall. So you can't hold us responsible. I think that would sound really silly. People would not accept it. And I, I, with all due respect, I think it's a little embarrassing for Waltham that that was the quote that ended up in WBZ because it's not, it's not a good quote to explain how our city council works or what the role of a legislative body is relative to the executive branch. And what I think he was really saying is we have an obligation to trust the mayor that her intentions are what they what she says they are. I think that's really what he meant. And I don't think that's a good idea if a majority of the council has that attitude that makes the mayor basically a dictator, right? Because it's saying as long as it sounds good on paper, not only should you, you know, you have an obligation to approve it based on what she says the effect is going to be. That's not a good policy, I don't think. I mean, if that's the level of scrutiny they're giving to things, it sounds like they could be replaced with a rubber stamp. Like, it's not very, it's a little and, concerning that they view that, like, the, the, the immediate effects of things that they're voting on aren't actually directly related to whether or not they take a vote on it or not. But, I, I mean, that, that kind of discontinuity also goes with some of the other stuff that was being expressed, like the counselors seeming to be angry that they were like even con getting contacted by people at all on behalf of the farm and uh, m multiple of them they <laughs> were more angry at the volume of emails that and and at getting contacted and that that was the information disinformation itself and rather than anything that anyone was saying i even saw some someone posted saying that they had like contacted them about an unrelated matter and got a copy paste email about the farm back from a counselor which i can't verify but it sounds like something that they would do the uh and then the, also in the same sort of vein uh, like some of the follow-up effects of this have been like former city councilors posting online angry that like the critics of this whole process even showed up and that they weren't trusting enough of the mayor and the process in general and it's like it's awfully convenient that these are the same people that are very much in favor of everything that's happening. It's former people who used to work there. So. By the way, I had a little bit of a brain blip earlier. Um, I just want to give a shout out to that beautiful EMAS Craft community, which is the Eastern Mass Collaborator Collaborative Regional Alliance for Farmer Training. It's a mouthful, but they do really good work. And I just do want to thank that community for coming out to support our Waltham community and the work that our community farm is doing. 
Yeah, James, I thought it was, I always think it's funny whenever like a really big, uh, big thing comes up in the uh, Waltham City Council and every single time counselors, even certain ones do it more often. They're always like, I got so many emails, uh, so much disinformation. And uh, it reminds me when I asked the city councilor once, was, uh, and I was surprised by the answer, I asked them, how many emails a day do you get about Waltham issues, about people reaching out? And they said, about well, four. And I was like, and I really thought it was gonna be more than that. I really thought the role of the city councilor uh, required more back and forth emailing. Um, but, uh, apparently not. And, uh, apparently only when a big issue comes up and then, and then apparently it's just way too many. Apparently it's way, you know, after the four emails, it's definitely over time for them to be getting back to people in a timely manner. But that also um, kind of goes to the, how they kind of, it feels like a lot of what city councilors sort of view their role as like a human resources kind of thing, like basically, uh, pl playing like. PR interference for things the city was going to do anyway to angry constituents and now they're just angry that they had an increased workload for a day. A uh, few thoughts. Um, Josh, you brought up uh, Sean uh, talking about supporting the farm. I think a lot of counselors, uh, especially the ones that voted yes, uh, use that term, uh, use that phrase uh, that they support the farm. Um, it's it's like a really empty platitude to be saying that, especially now, especially with this kind of vote, because like, what does supporting the farm actually mean? Like you say those words, like what do those words mean? Because for a lot of people, um, when you tell them that you support the farm, uh, they hear that you support the farmers that are tending the land. Like you, that is what they hear when you say, I support the farm. But that's not, that's not the case for, for some of these people. Uh, a lot of these counselors, what in my interpretation of I support the farm means I support the continued existence of green space on the Waltham field station. And that's not the same thing. And it's, also, it's a lot of like farming in the abstract as a concept. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even use farming. I, I, I said green space because for some reason I, I kind of get the vibe that it's, that it's going away, going away that way. But it's just like, that's not the same thing. And I wish people were more transparent about that. Like I support the farm and I support the farmers, two very different phrases. And I wish people were more transparent about which camp uh, that they're in. And also um, see what's getting replaced. Like the, the, there was that, uh, they, they put, put out that sort of, that, um, and that's sort of you know, the survey for people to reserve plots to, to rent in the future. And it's like this, you go from having something that might be publicly usable or accessible by people to something where you have to rent a space to have access. And that's yeah, like let's, the perfect, let's that's the perfect that. summary for how this goes. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute. So uh, I think it was the very next day. Let's let's find this out. The city of Waltham posted on their Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to pull it up a survey that people wanted uh, that they wanted people to fill out and I'm going to share my screen. Um, uh, this was December 30th. So any interest in residential community garden is Waltham? Take our survey. Uh, the Waltham is serving interest in new farm plots, a Cornelia Warren farm and field house. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, and when you click on it, uh, it gives you a list of questions um, about farming and how big of a farming plot you would like. And uh, and it gives, gives, you, gives you the opportunity to put notes and stuff. Um, and so I thought that this was hilarious optics after saying that they were going to save the farm and that they weren't going to mess with the field station uh, and that nothing was going to change that much. Uh, and then like the very next day, they say, hey, we just uh, we were thinking about we've got like 26 additional acres of land for us to do with. Are you guys interested in community farming? And what's interesting about this is that Grow, which is a nonprofit uh, that, um, if you ever go down the uh, down the property of, of Beaver Street, you'll see a bunch of uh, community garden plots um, right next to the farm. Grow uh, 
is the person in, is the nonprofit in charge of uh, like organizing all of that. And so there are already community gardening plots and a nonprofit on that land that is uh, doing that. And uh, we learned from uh, from this post that Grow was not alerted to the survey at all. And so this is a maverick novel idea from the city of Waltham. Uh, to talk about community gardening. It's not It's not the people that are already doing it. It's not the farm that is farming the land. This is the city of Waltham putting, laying the groundwork for an idea that they have for community gardening as well. So it's, it's you know, Grow is not aware of it. So all of the land that's already allocated for community gardening, it's not that land they're talking about. And, it's, and so which land is it? And just the day before they were <laughs> talking about restricting land to the Waltham Field Station. <laughs> So that the optics of, of this blow me away, blew me away. Um, terrible yeah. optics and um, generally uh, City of Waltham social media has been doing a pretty good job. There was clearly, I don't, a communication breakdown at some point. It was either a cringe error or a, a screw off to put it on the website. And to do that during a mayoral election year is, is what it is. It shows how unthreatened she feels, I think, you know, it's. Well, yeah, to, to not even be screening the Facebook po post at this point says something thing we never get a debate about the issues in Waltham at the city council it's always a debate about we're here to tell you not to do x and we're going to deny that we're doing x or the mayor gave us a piece of paper we're going to vote yes or no we don't know what it means and it's a debate about what does it mean the whole debate about do we want a farm or do we want community gardens or can we have both where does that debate happen? Like, that's what's disappointing. I feel like, um, you know, about the Waltham City Council in general is it's so rare to hear a debate about the actual issues. Yeah, instead the debate is over the narrowly presented thing that has had anything that might be objectionable cut off that they're voting on that is the entire scope of what is being voted on. Any knock-on effects need to be ignored. I want to go back to some Chris reference and you just sort of reference it the sort of resentment that a lot of counselors express when they get a lot of calls and emails. And I think I can kind of understand where that comes from because a lot of people, when they're writing a city councilor, it's the first time they've done it. They don't know a lot of the backstory. They're writing about one issue that's important to them. So they, there's a wide range of expectations. Some people think you have to, you're supposed to sound angry. You're more likely to get what you want if you sound angry. Some people assume the person they're writing to has a certain intention. Like you deliberately, you know, you're anti-farm. You know, I was, I saw, uh, it was a group of farm people who asked me to write to you. So that must mean you're anti-farm, right? So they're making assumptions. And that happens. That's part of being an elected official. And I'm not saying I would deal with it well because I don't have a thick skin, <laughs> but I think they need to deal with it and not always, not I shouldn't say always, but I don't think this, they not always express resentment against getting these emails, the fact that people are making certain assumptions about them, people are taking a certain tone. That's not really the point. The point is that a lot of people care about this issue. And some of them are people who never paid attention to what's going on in until now. So when every time they get a ton of calls and emails, that's actually a good thing. I know it doesn't feel like a good thing to them because a lot of them are angry, but it's a good thing. And to, to come in and, and complain about the fact that something got a big public response is basically, it's anti-democratic. It sets a bad example for what democracy is about and what the council is doing. And I wish counselors would just stop doing that. Don't complain about getting lots of email and phone. I a lot of them are going to say unfair things, make assumptions about you. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. But don't complain about it in public because it's anti-democratic. Um, somebody at the meeting brought up the fact that we bought the farm with CPA money. So of course, we're going to uh, continue farming on the land. And it's silly to think that uh, we're not going to do that. Um, I didn't think that was completely genuine. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, that means that the Community Preservation Act, which is money set aside from real estate levies, uh, is used specifically only for open space, affordable housing, and historical preservation. Anyone can actually apply to use this money, and we have a Community Preservation Committee to opine on if it's a good use of money or not. Um, and so the mayor uh, used at least some of this money uh, to buy the farm, uh, but what people uh, aren't remembering, especially at that meeting, um, is that uh, within those deed restrictions, there exists in fine print the word uh, recreation for usages. And I remember when the city bought the farm that advocates for the Walton Fields Community Farm uh, wanted the mayor to take that language out uh, because their concern was that they that the mayor could easily just just demolish everything and put in a stadium. And we were, we were wondering if the just parking for a stadium exists within the words of rec recreation. And so and so it's not uh, exactly uh, gen uh, generous to say that because we used uh, CPA money that it will continue to be forever used like that. Um, and also it made, me, it made me wonder if a corn maze counts as open space or if it's specifically recreation. Um, it's I so, think it could uh, arguably be either. Yeah, so yes. under the CPA, uh, open recreation is a subcategory of open space. Basically, there was a, a court case that confirmed that recreational outdoor space is a type of open space under the law. It up. I do think um, the question of where are these nonprofits going to have their office space is imminently going to become a huge question once we move past the conversation we're having right now. Um, but just, I, I think that if we keep an eye on what, what the worst case scenarios could be, but just also continue to advocate for what exists nearby and look to that and say, well, this is what we want. I think that will be very helpful if we have concrete ass. So let's go over a few of the most egregious lies that I felt were shared at this uh, meeting. So first up, uh, Sean, and uh, we we talked a little bit about this. Josh, you talked a little bit about this. Uh, so, Sean. I've, the mission I was given by the lessees at the farm is that they wanted an RFP process to be done as soon as possible. I know it has been nine months. But back in June, we, there, was, there was a request for another delay because we want someone asked to have this transmitted to the Conservation Commission, have them run the farm. The whole process is to get the RFP uh, proposal going so people can get their, their grants, their public and private grants. I'm the Ward 6 counselor. The matter at hand is pretty simple. We can either vote for environmental remediation or against it. That's the matter at hand. The, t the secondary and tertiary. So I felt like those are two egregious lies back to back to each other. Um, we'll deal with the first, but a little bit of backstory we, we didn't we didn't even mention is that Sean Durkee is the Ward Six City Councilor, which is where the farm is. So it's very important for people to realize to to pay attention to what his response was. And yeah, the, I think Josh uh, used the the right word was it was kind of in, his his response was kind of embarrassing. It was really not the champion of the farm that people were really looking for, and he his comments were disappointing at best. But uh, in that video, two egregious lies back to back. First one, that the leases won an RFP as fast as possible and that they weren't uh, in favor of the um, uh, the motion to transfer care, custody, and control to the Conservation Commission, which was a jab at George Darcy. He didn't use his name, but um, a few weeks ago, that was actually a couple months ago, um, uh, George wanted the instead of what the mayor's plan was, which was to transfer the care, custody, and control of the field station to the DPW, uh, it's all over the public works, um, to instead either build an agricultural commission, uh, which uh, understandably would take a long time, uh, at, at least bring it to the conservation commission, which he felt was a better idea. Um, but he said that the leases uh, wanted RFP as fast as possible. Which leases are these? Because all the leases that are part of this conversation uh, right now all would like us to slow down and really 
uh, talk about what's going on and how are we getting there and what's the timetable. And so to say that, uh, first of all, to say that they weren't in favor of transferring the Conservation Commission uh, and also that they want an RFP as quickly as possible, no matter what, uh, egregious lie. A uh, second egregious lie is, uh, should, should go without saying that the vote is either for remediation or against remediation. That's just like, that's just almost childish to, to say that you think that that is what the vote is, um, and especially for the board six city councilor where the farm exists to say that you're either for remediation or against it. And especially for the farmers uh, that said, please vote no, to say that they're not for remediation is disturbing. Um, it reminds me of at that uh, farm meeting that me, uh, Josh and James went to that D. Cricker, a uh, famous uh, conservationist in Waltham was like, can everyone here raise their hand uh, if they uh, don't support the remediation of this land, if they have a problem, if they disagree that it needs to be remediated? And no one raised their hand. Everyone can agree that the remediation uh, is required. It's just, it's, it's, how, it's how it's been going about. And is, this is the, something we talk a lot about. It's not exactly, um, what the city is doing, but it's how the city is going about it. It's the decision-making process of the mayor that we have an issue with. And we uh, talk a lot about this. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. But to go to the decision-making process and the opaque nature of it too, we didn't men get a chance to mention it, but also like this does have like implications for like the farm directly operating, like having the all mm -hmm. this go down at the specific time because this is like when they're doing CSA shares. This is like when yeah. they're planning like yeah, what Josh, can you, their can operations you are gonna be. Yeah, can you share your screen on that map again? Uh it does look like the CSA sign up start in two weeks. Um we don't have information at this point that Waltham Fields Community Farm has a winter share distribution um this season as some farms do so that makes a huge difference in terms of what we're looking at um if they were had access blocked off imminently and they were doing a winter share distribution um they would have to change things imminently the winter or sorry the csa signups will all be online so that will not be affected what will be affected is um starting seedlings the greenhouses will be blocked off um, and some seedlings are started as early as um, mid-February. Um, it can be very early depending on some of those long season crops. And certainly the planning is starting. Um, this is the time uh, coming back from the holidays where um, the seed orders go in. So that's what we're really looking at for impact. And not to mention the three fields that are literally being farmed. Absolutely. Um, but in terms of the immediate impact right now, they ca they can't do the planning and, of course, um, the fundraising we've talked about, but just, just in terms of what we're looking at right in front of us right now, farm wise. Definitely. Um, moving on to another egregious lie uh, that I felt was shared. Uh, Josh, you can uh, stop uh, sharing screen. Um, and I think this is the most egregious uh, lie. Um, so this is uh, this is going to be Kathy Ann Harris talking. For and ensure, I would like to see a little bit of understanding about the position that we are put in here. If we stand for the environment and the environment means something, then we must clean it, because otherwise we're allowing farming to occur. Where I just read. An unacceptable amount of toxicity in the land. Kathy Ann Harris talking about the uh, pollution that's going on, the uh, the uh, all the things that need to be abated, all the things that need to be remediated. Uh, she gives an impassioned speech about uh, all the data that says like how polluted it is and, and all of the to toxins that are in the soil, and then says uh, that you need to be supportive of this because we can't be farming on that land. And now that is an egregious lie because that is this is not the space where farming is being done. This is the space that is not part of farming and this is why everything needs to be closed off apparently. Uh, and uh, actually Josh, uh, could you share that one more time? It'll be easier uh, to, to show uh, with this map. Okay. 
And so at the very bottom, uh, that, uh, that purple circle with the purple arrow, um, uh, that is the space that needs to be remediated. And that is the, that is everyone, everyone understands that, uh, that has been, uh, illegally dumped on for, for years, uh, by, various individuals uh, that I think is gonna to come to light eventually. Um, and and everyone agrees, uh, but it's not being farmed on currently. Um, and I think Kathy and Harris saying that uh, we can't, we have to support this because we can't be farming on something like that. I think it's an egregious lie. I mean, you know, could it be her saying like, you know, we're eventually gonna farm on it? Maybe, but that's, that's not how, that's not how it came off. It made, it seemed to be uh, her insinuating that the farm is giving people produce off of toxin filled uh, soil, which is uh, an egregious well, lie, um, especially from Kathy and Harris, who generally I feel, uh, wants to be perceived as supporting the farm uh, and farmers. Um, and so I was very disappointed at that egregious lie. I need to double check, but in that particular clip, it was the, the you can tell that she's a lawyer because of the wording where she said that it was, uh, wasn't that there is a lot of pollution in this soil. This is why this can happen. She said, where I just read that there was, or where I'm seeing that this is. Yeah. So those are things that are not disprovable, but as opposed to say, making a de declarative statement about something that's actually real or not, or like what an intention that they have is. And that's just par for the course of all of this. Everything's got at least one level of plausible deniability. And, and, it just, and it just goes back to the fact that no one is saying that remediation doesn't need to be done. No one is saying that. It's about the decision-making process of the city and why, Everything here has to be off limits to the farm to clean up this purple circle, especially when, uh, and the land trust uh, is putting this out at the very bottom, there is an available gate there. I did touch on this throughout, but like the, the whole urgency of this situation is strikes me as very arbitrary. And it's interesting how it seems to line up in ways that are particularly bad for the farm, like operationally. And so you have these like, this like it feels like an artificial urgency to do this cleanup now at all costs when this is like actually like part of the way that they funded purchase or how, part of the way they negotiated the price for buying the land was the fact that they knew it was contaminated and needed cleanup and now at this particular moment it's being presented that it's this urgent thing that has to be done because it's gating that may be true and it's probably very important to do the cleanup too but it just is it, it's it's it strikes me as this is like organized in such a way that it's politically convenient for them or and not for the people on the farm it's i mean they can say that that's not their intention but that does seem like it's the outcome and that was something that was brought up and i don't think actually got answered at all is what is the urgency like everyone was saying that you know, let's just pause. George Darcy wants a public input session in March, which is actually still planned. Um, and and everyone was concerned that it was the holidays and people were like, why don't we just wait? And there was really no clear answer about why we couldn't wait. And so this was very, this was pushed through very, very quickly. And that is the uh, main talking point for the people that voted now is that we have, we can wait. We, there's no real reason why we can't wait, but they lost. Um, and so I thought what that was interesting was Karen Dunn came up as a as a big supporter of waiting. Um, generally, I'm not a big fan of Karen Dunn. I don't think she votes uh, the way that I would like city councilors to vote um, when issues come up. Uh, but um, she really, I think, uh, had a good speech. Uh, you know, she had a standing ovation for her speech and. Uh, um, and also Joey LaCava, um, my dear friend Joey LaCava, who I ran against in the War 5 uh, race two years ago. Um, uh, he also voted no and was the first person uh, to bring up concerns um, about how the vote proceeded and how it should go forward. Uh, he, I wouldn't say, uh, always votes in ways that I don't like. Um, uh, so he was... It's definitely someone I was surprised by, though, that he voted that way.
So we'll we'll be keeping an eye on this. Uh, so the city council voted to allow this to happen. The uh, farm said they were having an emergency meeting. Um, they're going to have to change up how they do things. And so we'll hopefully be able to use this as a means to uh, broadcast uh, their message uh, and figure out how people can be useful uh, for the preservation of uh, Walton Fields Community Farm. Um, one other thing we wanted to touch upon, uh, Josh, you can, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, one other thing we want to talk about uh, that uh, happened at the city council meeting was the Lexington Solar Farm um, was brought up. Uh, Josh, do you want to talk about what this, uh, how, you want to introduce this segment? Sure, this is, uh, there's a plan to build a solar farm um, that would be in Lexington, but very close to the Waltham line near the Cambridge Reservoir. Um, and uh, what we had discussed about in this in the past was that Waltham actually already made an attempt to stop this. They were originally, the developers were originally told that they couldn't put an access road through that neighborhood in Waltham to get to the property in Lexington because it wasn't zoned for that. The developer sued um, and Waltham lost. Um, so now what's happening is Lexington is having a meeting, I think in February, um, to talk about this. It's not clear whether Lexington can do anything to stop it, but there's been a big effort um, by neighbors and people concerned about this to draw attention to it. So there were two different counselors who brought in resolutions related to it at this meeting. Um, and they it had to do with basically asking Lexington to try to mitigate some of the problems they foresee, like they think it's not um, safe for neighbors, so there needs to be more offset. That would be an example of a mitigation. Um, but I'm actually, and then I think the resolution was now they're going to bring in, this wasn't approved, they're going to bring in officials to talk about this at another meeting coming up. So yeah, so two resolutions were brought in um, and a little bit of uh, municipal uh, function is that uh, Kath, uh, Kathleen Newman, the president, actually ruled uh, the second one, which is George Darcy's resolution, out of order because there can only be one resolution talking about one specific issue at the city council at a time. And so George's resolution, which was very thoughtful, uh, was ruled out of order. So this is the one that could push forward. And this is basically saying, please, Lexington, please do something about this. Um, we're getting a lot of emails. Um, and so this was... Uh, put forward by Randy LeBlanc, and then the second one was George Darcy. Um, and so uh, the only thing that I, that I really want to say about this is that I first thought this was nimbyism. I thought that literally the comments on, on some of these uh, Facebook posts were, I support solar farms, just not in my backyard, like literally verbatim, like just saying those words, which I thought was hilarious. Um, and so what I'll say is that Randy and George have both been huge proponents of renewable energy, not you know, not championing it in any sense uh, like other cities do, but generally they say I like renewable energy, which is about as far as uh, we'll get in Waltham sometimes. Um, and so them being against it kind of makes me rethink my uh, subject. I should really just do uh, more research into it, but um, especially for George Darcy, who was the board three city councilor, which is the land that it abuts, um, he is. Uh, just being a liaison to his community. So he just might be uh, being a good city councilor and bringing up his concerns that he has. Um, but this is literally uh, people not being in favor of a solar farm. Uh, and of course, it should be said that it's mowing down a bunch of trees to do so. So there is, there is, I understand why you would be against it and why you would for it. Um, so I will be doing that, doing some thinking. But what I wanted to bring up uh, was a uh, video, um, another video uh, from this meeting. I've been doing a lot of clipping recently, uh, but I thought was the funniest moment of the entire night. And this is uh, Anthony LaFauci speaking on the solar farm. For everybody watching at home February 15th, if the city can put that on their website, we basically filled a room tonight with constituents of Waltham who had a passion for a farm, we need to fill the room in Lexington with constituents and residents with the passion for what they want and believe. I think a resolution is a great first step from a council's perspective to that body, but 
people showing up, 50, 100, and filling that room is going to speak volumes. Yes. And the other point is point of information. There is no public meeting. It's all via Zoom, unfortunately. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, e emails, text messages. So that was basically, Anthony, uh, saying, so what I thought was funny was that he clearly did not do his research and that George had to remind him that this is not uh, this is not going to be an in-person meeting, which I, was, I, I literally audibly laughed. Um, but what I also thought was it was like semi-patronizing to, ins to insinuate that Waltham residents couldn't care about two issues at the same time. Uh, and also what I, what I found weird about that video was that Anthony was insinuating that a bunch of people showing up was somehow going to help sway the opinion of uh, anyone. But in that very same meeting, the crowd of people did not actually sway the vote at all um and so i thought that was uh, particularly funny i think uh anthony's very transparent in his toxicity uh even though he doesn't uh realize it um any takes on solar farm that was a particularly funny bit to, to be it, one openly wondering why you can't get a crowd as big as what just showed up to oppose the thing you voted on for the thing you don't like. Yeah, I don't like this thing. <laughs> People show up for that. But I think that will do it uh, for today. Um, the next uh, debrief that we post will be our end of session wrap up. Um, we've done one of these before, um, and we'll, this will be our second time. It'll uh, just be a synopsis of everything uh, that has been going on and all of our takes on it, and generally how we feel Waltham stands uh, politically. And looking forward towards the uh, towards the new year. I'm looking forward to that. Um, if you have any input into how we should be doing that, I've been reaching out to a few of our viewers um, because I'm really interested in your input. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. But until then, uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Happy New Year, everyone. Bye-bye.